Warm greetings to all designers and everyone else touched by the magic of UX UI design in one way or another. This is the third episode of UX Upgrade series by Saiton. As a reminder, this series aims to enhance the keenness of your eye and perfect your professional skills by remaking various design patterns laid out in free access on the web. In the previous episode, I promised to tackle the design of a shopping cart and a checkout. So said, so done. Today we will review the screens of a food delivery app. Let's do this on a deep level. Remember, UX design is not static. It should work for the whole flow of user system interaction. Let me know in the comments below which mistakes you have spotted. Now, let's get it started. Mistake number one, coexistence of two headers. The first eye-catching mistake is the two-header type of layout. The first header is a navigation bar with search and location settings. The second one is a simple text header indicating the current location of a user. To obviate this evidently excessive duality, let's decide which of the two headers is more deserving of the privilege to remain on this page. As I see, this is a header my order, because it describes the current state of the system and thus complies with the overall functionality of this page as a shopping cart. So renaming it accordingly is logical and I would say natural. If you take a different view, I cannot wait to see them in the comments. Situations like this one reaffirm the importance of fine-tuning skills in UX copywriting, which is also an important part of a designer's job. What seems to be the most prominent item on the page? A link to the store, isn't it? Don't you think this is a little counterintuitive? Returning to the shop is the last thing a user may dream of at this moment. They just want to get their food delivered and enjoy it in a calm atmosphere. Moreover, we have just been there a couple of minutes ago. Therefore, it would be more appropriate to designate this action as secondary and display it accordingly. Let's hence make its button less contrasting and garish. We can still find and press it if needed. But now the focus of the page is shifted towards the main mission of the screen, completing your order. Forgive me in advance, now I am going to bore it just a tiny bit. Try to recall and visualize a typical supermarket receipt. The fundamentals of designing paper receipts are similarly applicable to digital ones. In a typical receipt, prices are aligned to the right by the decimal point. This way the human eye can easily scan the list of all the prices. But on this one, prices are replaced with counters. This makes human visual attention confused and unable to perceive the sequence of the quantitative data consistently. Let's switch the elements and voila! We have a clean and tidy price list. One of the most critical mistakes that I usually find in some design concepts or non-commercial design projects is underestimation of the real size of space that some elements might occupy when they get filled with meaning and content. In such cases, real-life interfaces may turn cluttered and distorted compared to how they looked in natty initial designs. For example, the length of the price or a weight indicator can be much longer than it is on the screen. Moreover, this particular layout is intended for a widescreen. Just imagine, better not, what will happen if we transpose this design onto smaller devices. To find a safe solution, I will relocate weight measurements to the title of the product. Even if it takes a little bit more space than expected, it won't be as critical as it is now with the current placement fraught with chaos and waste of horizontal space. Let's specify the goal of the card once again. A user should be able to take one last look at what's inside, check the correctness of the pricing and find out the total price. There is no definitive solution or a rule of thumb about the placement of total, but in my projects I prefer to keep it fixed at the bottom of the page. This way, no matter how many products are in the cart, I can always see how exactly the next delivery would hit me in the pocket, without extra scrolling. Now let's press the checkout button and… what is that? 
I spotlighted the importance of visual consistency in the first episode of UX Upgrade. If you haven't seen it yet, I recommend you to check it out. I would apply the header style of the second screen to the first one. Because its back button naturally makes it more relevant for a user. However, the choice of the header style is simply a matter of taste, so that you can pick and apply any one from a variety of available ones. You just make sure you realize and can substantiate your preference. Have you noticed that we have already changed this header twice? This is the iterative nature of design process in action. Let's proceed to the second screen. Right now, adding an address and selecting a payment method are processed on two separate pages. This is not convenient. We'll come back to that one. But before that, a more serious blunder is the practice of asking users the same questions over and over again. Delivery apps usually ask for the location at the start of the entire flow in order to show only relevant restaurants, where delivery to your area is available. Just save all the data already provided by a user and then pre-fill respective fields automatically to streamline the ordering process and not keep a user hungry longer than needed. Now let's get back to the problem of two standalone pages. Using additional pages without utmost necessity noticeably overcomplicates the process of filling out the data, because it requires extra effort and more time to access the checkout page. In particular, we need to tap every section, then save change, return to the previous step and do this for both operations. That's time-consuming and exhausting. Yet a primary goal of good user experience is, on the contrary, to make it as quick and frictionless as possible and let a customer enjoy their favorite burgers, pizza or salad in a blink of an eye. The faster the user completes their goal, the more positive their emotions and higher the chances to get back for reorder are. So let's simplify the form and reduce it to just a few fields. If you are attentive enough, you could notice that I didn't change the time field. This decision is based on the assumption that an option of scheduling the delivery may be not available for some restaurants. Thus, this feature belongs to secondary, not primary functionality. Such an understanding, in turn, comes from hands-on experience of using catering services. This is how design and real life work together. Most likely, designer carelessness led to this mistake. If we could ignore the total price on the previous screen, I totally don't recommend doing that, the total price is the key element of the checkout page. Here we are, the last screen. It's so simple, isn't it? How could there be any mistakes? This is what Dr. Watson would say. Elementary, my dear Watson, pay attention to the words. This is what Sherlock Holmes would reply. First, the heading reads, order is completed. But a hungry user feels this is not true. The order will be completed indeed when the food arrives on the table in the kitchen or at least at the front door. Then let's change the heading to order is placed. It displays the current order status more precisely. Second, the button suggests proceeding back to our profile. But why do we need a profile if we are waiting for our order? Let's better redirect a customer to the order step, where they could track a courier's location. Now let's check the results and compare before and after as we always do. Amazing! These are supposed to be your words, my dear readers, because I never like to toot my own home. But I really hope this episode was interesting and useful for you. If not, I challenge you to find the mistakes I have missed and start a discussion in the comments below. That will be fun for sure. And I'm already working on the next episode that will be more systematic and theoretical than all the previous ones put together. But this theory will not be boring. So share your XUI topics that are challenging for you at the moment in the comment section. I would be happy to know that you are looking forward to the next episode of UX Upgrade as much as I do. Don't forget to like, repost and subscribe to our channel. Stay safe and see you next time!